Hello, I'm David Wormsey and this video is on how to kill gravity form spam. It's a video I didn't think I needed to make because there's so many excellent tutorials already out there on this topic. But looking at them, I realized there are none that seem to mention the main thing that we use. So I'm going to cover that at the end of this video. So if you're short of time, maybe just cheat and look at the comments or skip to the end of the video. But as we've been using Gravity Forms for eight plus years, running it on roughly 40 to 80 client sites at any given point, I've tried all of the options that are available and I've developed my own thoughts on them. So for context, I thought I would quickly run through all of the options. Okay, so I'm going to start with what we're not using now, which is Google Recapture. Gravity Forms has support for version 2, the visible and invisible version. You probably know what that is. It's just a simple tick box to say I'm not a robot, which you don't see until you submit on the invisible version of it. Much improved on the original Recapture, which had all this broken squiggly text which you had to copy always confused me but there is a new version which is even better recapture version 3 which is entirely non-intrusive Google is using some other measures to work out whether you are a bot or you're not and that will include if you're logged into your Google account obviously if you are your chances are you're not a bot but this isn't even on the roadmap for gravity forms at the moment I read in the forum that it won't be considered until they've got version 2.5 of Gravity Forms out. And then, of course, it's going to depend on how many people request it. But we're not using it because it's a lot of faff with accounts and keys. It's more data to Google, and that might have implications for some, depending on where you live with GDPR. I know that those in Germany tend to put Google, uh, Google fonts on their own server rather than leave them on Google's own servers because of issues there. So they might need to consider stuff with this. Our main reason, though, for not using it is just the lack of feedback on a visitor's experience. So I have definitely logged out of my Google account and gone surfing and it's not long before I find something like this screen over here. Always confuses me, even something simple like this. I never know when it's just the lights or the whole area I should cover. Some of them change where you've got fire hydrants and they pop up in different boxes. So I really don't want to wish that upon genuine visitors and without any knowledge really of what their experience is going to be. I'm always going to see this as a last resort. Something else which we have used once but don't use now, and that is the integration between Gravity Forms and Akismet, which is the default anti-comment spam plugin in WordPress. It's pre-installed, it's owned by Automatic, which is the commercial side of WordPress. They own the hosted WordPress.com, which is why it's there. And if you do turn that on, then it automatically integrates. Let me just go and show you this on my setup over here. So if you go to forms and settings and you've turned on Akismet, then it gets automatically turned on in the settings here and will apply to all forms and fields. By the way, if you're wondering why this looks different, I'm using the beta version of version 2.5. So if yours may not look like that but that's how that works and again it's a bit like Google but there may be some GDPR concerns because Akismet works by referencing data with stuff that is on their server as well so you might want to turn off some forms or some filters or may not be able to use it at all but if you do want to change things there, then you'll need to go to the Gravity Forms documentation and have an understanding of how code filters works to be able to do that. But we don't do that because, again, it's more faff with keys and accounts. A Kismet is only free for personal use, so that doesn't count if you've got a personal blog and you're monetizing that. And it is really aimed at comment spam. Now, there is an overlap here between comment spam and email spam, and you could be using the same solution. In fact, we were for a little while. But our setup at the moment when it comes to comment spam is that we try and go with what is just in WordPress in the first place. There are a few articles by a guy called Jeff Starr, who's always worth listening to, and he talks about the fact that you probably don't need to install a plugin for this first. Just use what's already under your settings in discussion. You can 
kill most of the spam there. And he actually gives on another article a list of these kind of keywords that spammers use that they might try and submit and you can set those up here so they either automatically go in for moderation or they are just trashed straight away. So that's really the first place that we go to when we're dealing with the comment spam. And then if that is not working for us, then we will go and use another plugin, not Akismet. We will use Anti-Spam B, which is very lightweight, seems to work quite well for us. It doesn't have to connect up to any servers as far as I understand. I mean, I really can't compare it against Akismet. We did use Akismet once on one site and I, this is years back and I got some false positives, which were annoy me a little bit and I swapped it out for anti-spam B and was quite happy but that one site is no indication of anything anyway that's a slight distraction I guess from what we're talking about and so is the next point if you're just using gravity forms to collect email addresses for your list you want them to subscribe to something chances are you might be using gravity forms with one of the add-ons to any of these services I think you're probably covered with that when it comes to spam because I think since GDPR there's most of these services insist upon a double opt-in form so whatever the spammer submits as an email address then this is going to send out to check that they want to join this list and of course spammers are unlikely to use real email addresses so that's that okay i'm going to move on to now what we actually do use so i turn on the anti-spam honeypot on all of my forms with Gravity Forms. That's generally where we start and we leave it there. So let me just go and go over to the settings for that. So under each of your forms, under the form settings, you'll need to go and actually turn these on because they're off by default. And there is one other thing that I set up here. I mentioned this in another video. I set up some restrictions. So I limit the amount of email submissions that can come in on each form per day. So that gets rid of the real heavy spamming that might slow down your site or give you a big bill if you're paying for transactional email service. So I do these two things and that's really where we leave it when we set up a client. Client. We leave it just for that to happen. I should quickly explain how the anti-spam works. What it does is it fools bots into filling in a form that regular visitors don't see. And I can just show you an example over here. So I've turned the CSS off on here. And what it does is it reveals this line here that says this field is for validation purposes and should be left unchanged. Uh, and bots will fall for it the regular visitors won't see any of this and this is how it finds the spammers now this doesn't work all the time we start with that and then if there's a problem we go to our next solution that's what we do but before i go on to our next solution i'll mention one other thing which we did set up once but don't do often which i'm pretty sure will be very effective for spam and it is using what's in gravity forms to kind of create your own recapture using the conditional logic which is set against your button so let me just show you that i'm going to bring up my screen so i've created a form and in that form i've set up a question and i borrowed this from the gravity forms blog they got an article on this uh, how many sorry a cow has how many legs and then they have to answer it. I've used text here I guess I, I could have a drop down and then what you do when there is that question there you go on to your form settings and where the button is you can enable the conditional logic I'll just mention something else it's on my notes Apparently, conversion experts say it's best to get rid of the default submit. It's not a, a good converting micro copy. So if you need a default, probably send is much better. Anyway, distraction. Uh, so what you do here is you just set this on and find your field. And then you put in is your answer. You put your answer there. And what happens is if we go to the form itself and scroll down to the button, you can see the button here but it's not going to work until I enter the correct answer. If I put something wrong in, still I cannot submit. I have to put in the right answer of four and then I can submit my form. 
Okay, I'll just mention this as well because I love this. Um, this is one of the forms which I downloaded from Gravity Forms, one of their templates, and I only just spotted this recently. Uh, the error sign here, if we, need, we need to know your name, what if we wanted to send you a birthday cake? I'm definitely stealing that. I love that kind of humor. Anyway, let me move on to what we do use. Oh, I actually... <laughs> I've given it away. We use Gravity Forms Zero Spam Plugin. But just before, on the last uh, slider, I meant to say that the reason that we don't use this kind of setup there is mainly just because of friction. So where possible, for conversion reasons, we encourage clients to make forms as easy as possible and you know less things to, to get in the way, of course. I think if you were giving something away, it wouldn't be a big ask to ask them to fill in a question, but that's generally the reason we don't do that. So when we do end up with a problem, this is what we install, Gravity Form Zero Spam. And for us, over all of the sites, this is for a number of years, this has actually been true to its worth, Zero Spam, every time. Now, there are no solutions. We know this about spam. Spammers will find a route around everything. But so far for us, and perhaps it's because not so many people use it, this seems to solve our issue. But it does have one caveat that goes with this one, and that is that it blocks um, visitors who don't have JavaScript turned on in their browsers. Now, you have to go and actually turn that off in browsers. It's there by default. But I'm kind of brought up with my tradition of you're supposed to su support sites that don't have JavaScript turned on. In truth, I would wonder whether anybody really le legitimately, to get the good experience you do on the web with JavaScript, I'd be surprised if it isn't anything but the odd expert who would know what to do if something wasn't working or bots that use it. So maybe I might start considering moving towards just putting this on by default. Now, one other thing that I did quickly want to mention because I alluded to it is that there was another solution as well, which used to use the same method, WordPress zero spam. And it was the same method applied, but to comment spam and um, registrations as well. So we installed that and then we wouldn't have really needed anti-spam B, but more recently this year, um, there was a whole bunch of updates, about 20 odd of them came and I was getting complaints coming in saying spam had come back and it stopped working. So now they've dropped support for Gravity Forms altogether, but it's not using the same kind of method. So this has gone out for us because it doesn't, it's, it's not kind of preventing spam in the way it does. So we kind of reverted back to what we had with Gravity Forms Zero Spam and using Anti-Spam B should our setup not work. Okay, I think that is enough for this video. So it's left for me to thank you for getting to the end of this video. If you did, as always, I'd be extremely grateful if you took the time to share my content or like this video. And if this is your kind of content, perhaps consider subscribing to the channel. Anyway, thank you very much. I hope you have a nice day and I hope to see you in another video soon. Bye-bye.